audio, a ver si pueden escucharme. Francisco, good evening, can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Okay. ¿Sí me escuchas? Sí. Okay. Good, good. Excellent. excellent. Ostra, Charlie. Nice. <ríe> Bien, eh, solo denme un segundo. Okay, let's see. We are ready now. Just give me a second. Déjeme ver esto. Okay, and we're going to start now. Good evening, my friends, and welcome to another class. We are going to start with the class number 12. So, que es la clase número 12. Vamos a dar inicio. I know that some of you are on your way. Algunos van, pues, creo que de camino. Así que, pues, gracias. Thank you for... Let me know. Okay. So let's see. Here we have Carly. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Okay. How are you tonight? And um, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. Yes, I, I know, I know, but maybe you need a coffee, okay, or some water, okay, yes, so I'm coffee. going to try that this class um, can be quick, okay, okay. so nice, Carly, so hi, everybody, we're going to start with this class, so in this case, we have simple present versus present continuous, it is something that we were studying, algo que estuvimos pues eh, estudiando eh, la, ayer, que okay, yesterday we were studying this. And it is something, well, a grammar structure, es una estructura gramatical. Just give me a second. Okay. Let me see where. Yo le puedo enviar la otra imagen. Okay. Así que te, vamos a tener como un versus en este caso de present continuous con el simple present. Bien. Let's see who is the first person to arrive at your workplace. ¿Quién es la primera persona en llegar a tu trabajo? Okay. 
maybe an employee, it, it, it is your boss, it is a person that you know, a person that you recognize, okay? I don't know. What about you, Marvin? Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening, teacher. Hello. So, can you tell us who is the first person to arrive here? Primero en llegar en tu trabajo. Uh, my manager, the sales. Okay, sales manager. Okay, he's mm -hmm. the first person. Okay, nice. Okay, and what about this? What is the first thing you do? The first thing you do when you get at your workplace. Okay, Marvin, what do you do? What activity you do when you uh, arrive, cuando llegas, you arrive to your workplace? Okay. Um, I check furniture and check your movements. Okay, very good. Check furniture. That is something very important. Thank you. What about you, Carly? What is the first thing you do? La primera cosa que haces. And open the classroom. Mm, good, good, definitely. It is important. Thank you. What about you, Frank? What is the first thing you do in your workplace? Then we go with Gabriel. Hello? Okay, maybe we have some problems with Frank. Ordenar, order. Yes, teacher. Okay, yes. Creo que tenemos problemas, Frank. Hi, teacher. Hello, my friend. We're having some Creo problems. Sí. Hello. Ahora sí. Sí. Eh, ordenanza. Ah, la ordenanza. Ok, Jennifer. Thank you. Ok, now let's see some other. What about Gabriel? And then Flor. Good evening, Gabriel. Hi. Good evening, teacher. Ok, what is the first thing you do when you. Uh, uh, the first is a green coffee. Mm. Uh, yeah. And second, uh, and checking email. Okay, good one. Two, two important activities. Thank you. What about floor? And then we go with Roberto. Mm. Uh, clean cleaning staff. Okay, you clean. Mm -hmm. Good one. Thank you. What about uh, Roberto? What is the first thing you do? Good evening, teacher. Yeah, hello. Mm -hmm. Hello, Roberto. What is the first thing? ¿Qué es lo primero que hace cuando llegas? Uh, check, check the mail. Okay, check the mail. Thank you. Okay. Um, remember that when we arrive to our workplace, there are a lot of things to do, especially if you left things to do the day before. Especialmente si dejaron cosas por hacer del día anterior, that's really, really hard. Now, I'm going to present some adverbs. Le voy a presentar algunos adverbs, okay? Okay. Try to memorize one or two. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Le voy a dar unos 15 segundos. Just memorize two. Okay. What about if we listen to? Carly, and then we go with um, Flor. Okay, Carly, tell me two um, adverbs that you remember from the picture. Easy, so I'm passing this. Really? Mm -hmm. And anywhere? Mm, okay, thank you. We go with Flor, and then we go with Marvin.
Okay. Away. Uh, yes, Flor. Can you repeat, please? Away. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, um, Marvin. Somewhere. Then, some somewhere. Somewhere. Yes. Somewhere. Okay. Tell me to Marvin and then Francisco. Okay. Um, inside. Hey, beautiful. And beautiful. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um. Let's see, Francisco, and then we go with Kathy. Yeah, present order, mm -hmm. urgently. Okay, nice. Kathy, what about you? And then Roberto, if you remember two adverbs. Um, really, um, no signs. Mm -hmm. Good. And Roberto, what's your opinion about two adjectives that I show you? Rather, ra mm -hmm. rather, rather, más como es. Ok, let's check. Vamos a revisar entonces. Yes, here we have extend outside, away, lazily, neighbor, uh, rather, uh, bastantes, abroad, extremely. We have a lot of adverbs. Y tenemos los adverbios. Ok, adjectives are used to describe people or places. Las, este, los adjetivos se utilizan para describir a la gente o los lugares. Adverbs describe actions. Los adverbios describen las acciones. O sea, las oraciones en sí. Now, let's move to this. Bien, veamos esto. List of adverbs ends in ly. Entonces acá se van a dar cuenta que todos estos verbos, todos, perdón, adverbios, finalizan en eh, la letra L y la Y. ¿ve? Exactly, evenly, fully, gently, furiously, finally. Todos terminan en eso. Entonces, por ende, la, estas dos letras hacen que los adverbios terminen en, la, en el sufijo mente. Exactly. Exactamente. Uh, fully. Completamente. Um, let's see. Fortunately. Porque fortunate es afortunado. Pero fortunately, afortunadamente. Ok. Eh, si decimos finally. Final es de final. Pero sería finalmente. En este caso, son prácticamente como adjetivos. En los cuales pueden terminar en mente en español, ok? So what we're going to do is that I'm going to check the attendance list. When you listen to your name, then say hi, hello, good evening, or present, and then mention one of these. Después les menciono, ok? Let's listen to Abigail. Elizabeth. Present. Hello. Podría decir uno. Ok. Generally. Thank you. Now let's go with Flor. Present. All right. Generally. Okay. Especially, pardon. Especially. Okay. Good. Francisco. Really. Good. And Gabriel. Exactly. Nice. And uh, here we have Judith. No sé si está Judith. If not, but no. So I guess. Ivania va de camino. So let's move with Carly. And furiously. Okay, thank you. Kathy? Mm, freely. Nice. Uh, Marvin? Interesting. And uh, delicately. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fabrizio, creo que todavía no está activo. Hello, teacher. Ah, uh, hello, Fabricio. Okay, mention one of these adverbs. Um, Just read one. Easy or hard. <laughs> okay. Um, fortunately. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Patty, are you there? Okay. Then what about Roberto? Present teacher is okay. finally. Good. 
Cristi. Present teacher, present, ya voy llegando a la casa. Very nice, thank you. William. No, William, ok. Uh, Jocelyn parece que va de camino. Y Aneris, I don't know if we have Aneris. Ok, maybe not. Well, here we have this and ya vamos a utilizar todos estos adverbs, ¿verdad? Que tenemos acá. Y pues, este, para comenzar con, pues, con las preguntas, speaking activities, tenemos esto. Should all beauty contests be banned? Why? Why not? Deberían de ser, deberían de eliminarse los concursos de belleza, ¿sí? ¿No? Okay, why? Okay, um, you tell me what's your opinion about this. Y para activar a Carly, vamos a comenzar con ella. Okay, Carly. Bien, bien. Okay, Carly. and uh, in my point of view, they are unnecessary contest, and I think they should be banned because the definite beautiful has a single a stereotype. Okay, stereotype. Okay, good word. Thank you. Okay, stereotype. It is like a, a form to see something, right? In general, like an idea of beauty, right? Like it could be like physical. Okay, thank you. Now, Kathy, and then we go with Flo. Um, in my opinion, maybe not okay. provide, maybe modify the requirements to be able to participate and be more flexible. Okay, more flexible. Good, good words. It's like maybe modify. And for example, for the requirements, okay, los requisitos, okay, in all yes. those aspects that maybe even. I read a new, creo que leí una noticia, read news about that they are going to change all those things. For example, in the past or before, nowadays, uh, it is common that just single ladies, las chicas solteras, right? Just single mm -hmm. ladies can participate, but now maybe uh, can participate like um, married women, women, ¿verdad? mujeres casadas, or, or with kids, maybe they can participate. That could be a very, very good opportunity for uh, the other women, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, what about Flor? And then we go with Marvin. Uh, for me, they should be banned because there is a lot of discrimination against women. Against? Okay. Again. Okay, okay, good. Okay, that's so very nice. It's um a word against in contra. Okay. Yes, yeah, the, the, there are some things that are kind of very hard, some wasn't being rigidos in some things, and well, that could be that could happen. Thank you, Flor. What about uh, Marvin? And then we go with Roberto. Okay, teacher. In my opinion, no, because beauty pageants bring benefits to people. For example, um, they have a very good economic income. They obtain a university scholarships, among others. Good. Okay. Okay. Yes. There are some scholarships and it is something that in every uh, public event or some type, well, there are some events in which people can have uh, like an increase of their economy. So they increment the economy for certain events and even there are scholarships. Quiere decir que se ganan becas. Yes, and there is an opportunity that they can have. Okay, very nice, good one. Let's listen to Roberto, and then we go with uh, Christy. She está lista. Okay. Firstly, my opinion is that they should be canceled. Time 
they promote, promote bulimia and anorexia, allow because in additional to that in the search for the best body, the participants have to worry more about their imagine than their way of thinking. Okay, it is like uh, we uh, we were talking about stereotypes, as Carly mentioned, and as they have a very strict um, stereotype, tienen estereotipos bien eh, estrictos, they have to uh, be very disciplined about the body appearance or image. So that's why there have been a lot of girls that they have suffered of bulimia or anorexia, and that is real, yes. That is something that is sad, actually. Okay, let me see who else. Okay. Um, what about if we listen to uh, Fabricio? Are you ready to give your opinion? Uh, in reality, I don't know. I still can find the grace or purpose of this constant. Okay. So you can say yes or no. You say no problem with this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't like. I don't like. Um, you don't like I, watching this kind of uh, contests. No. 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 Definitely no. Okay. So that's it. <laughs> nice. But there are maybe a positive aspect or negative aspects. But it's like well, maybe you don't. It's not of your interest, right? Yes, and that usually that usually happens. Thank you. And what about if, if it be weird, weird? Yes. <laughs> okay, maybe. Okay, thank you. What about um, Gabriel? Are you ready with your opinion, Gabriel? Yes, teacher. Okay, please. Uh, my opinion is neutral. You mm -hmm. can learn from the culture of the orca of other country, and by the way, see international beauty. Okay, yes. Um, something there are some some specific events of these representatives that the, the, the los chicos que re, son representantes de cada país in which they have to show part of the culture. And that that's something really interest, interesting. Yeah, but we have different forms to, to learn about culture, but uh, they have been included uh, different aspects through the time. In the past was definitely just beauty uh, aspects, but now they have like very, well, special questions for them as well. And we're going to finish this round with, let's see. What if we listen to Francisco? Okay, Francisco. Okay, are okay. you ready? Ready? Okay, my um, friend. No, no. As long as they don't lose the sense of the or originality that they have always show with feminine beauty. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. Very interesting opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Francisco. Very nice. Now let's check this. Here we have, we continue with adverbs and its types. Tenemos diferentes eh, tipos de adverbios, pero aquí vamos a estudiar algunos en específico. Okay, I will need uh, Marvin, help me. Please help me reading the concept. Vamos a ver el concepto de adverbio. Can you read it, please? Marvin, can you hear me? ¿Me escuchas? Sorry, teacher, no le había escuchado. Okay, please. Eh, ¿Me decía? Ah, okay. I work with uh, qualify everything at sex, a noun, a pronoun, is called the verb. Okay, thank you. Entonces, es una palabra que modifica 
o califica todo excepción del eh, nombre, ¿verdad? O el pronombre. Quiere decir que los adverbios modifican todo a excepción del, de, de, del sujeto, digamos. Ok, Marvin, continue. Adverb of time. Adverb of time. Eh, the Alberta Cetinois time or periodic study adverb of, of time. Example. Example. Today, tomorrow, yesterday, ago, soon, no, once, sign. Since. Since. Okay, yes, those are examples of other of time. Okay, thank you. Here we have also, what if uh, we have the help of Carly, adverb of place. Okay, adverb of, of place. The adverb that denotes, denotes the place of, of occurrence is called has adverb of place. Example, near, above, below, out, far, away, there. Okay, those are other place. Estos son abreviados de tiempo. Estos son de lugar. Okay. Now let's listen to Fabricio. Advert of manner. Please. Arbor of manner. The adverb that denotes the manner of occurrence is called adverb of manner. Example, correctly. Rounding the verbally loudly. Uh, how do you say the last? Neatly. Neatly. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Okay, Así neatly. Que, thank you. So these are adverb manners. La mayoría de los adverbios de, 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 digamos, de modo son los que terminan en la L y la Y. Son los más fáciles de identificar, de hecho. Eso y los lo de tiempo, de time. Okay, so let's listen to Marvin. Can you help me with adverbs of frequency? Adverb of frequency. And this adverb denotes a frequency or number. Example, thirdly, secondly, thirdly, sometimes. Sometimes. Y también aquí tenemos otros, ¿ok? Se recuerdan de always, usually, often, never, ¿verdad? Hardly ever. Forman parte, they are part of adverbs of frequency, ¿verdad? Ya vimos adverb of time, adverb of place, adverb of manner, adverb of frequency. Vamos a usar uno de estos más adelante. Ok. Now here we have a conversation between Ryan and Paul, and Roll, and Roll. And in this case, here we have easy. Good afternoon, Raul. What are you doing right now? When we say right now, nos referimos a ahora mismo. Good afternoon, Ryan. Well, I am planning a video conference. Como ya les dije, ¿verdad? Conference. Oh, the conference with the new team in San Salvador. What is our team? doing right now yes it is they are getting ready for the conference in the middle room i see what time do you usually get to your workplace what's the first thing you do i usually arrive at 6 30 a.m and the first thing i do is to check my email in you well i arrive at 7 or 7 30 it depends on the traffic my first activity is to pick up the letters Bien, entonces le dice Ryan, eh, buenas tardes Raúl, eh, ¿qué estás haciendo ahora mismo? Buenas tardes Ryan, bueno, estoy eh, planeando una eh, videoconferencia. Thank you, we have. Um, oh, la conferencia con el nuevo equipo de Salvador. Eh, y le pregunta, what is our team doing right now? ¿Qué está haciendo nuestro equipo ahora mismo? Sí, ellos. Oh, sí, ese equipo. Ellos se están alistando para una conferencia en la sala de reuniones. Ya veo. ¿A qué horas usualmente llegas al, traba al trabajo? ¿Y cuál es la primera cosa que haces? Usualmente llego a las 7.30 y la primera cosa que hago es revisar check my email. And you? 
Well, bueno, yo llego a las 7, 7.30, depende del tráfico. Depends on the traffic. My first activity is to pick up the letters. Es eh, pues, recoger eh, las cartas. O bien, tenemos right now, conference, conference, hour, and then here we have first. Okay. Thank you for sending um, an erase. We're going to have a short practice. Vamos a hacer una pequeña práctica y luego volvemos con eh, pues, speaking activity. Okay, just give me a second. Mientras los ordeno. Okay, see you in a moment.
Okay, we're going to check the pronunciation of this and maybe we can have the help of what about Gabriel? Hello, Gabriel, good evening. Who was your partner? Quien fue tu compañero, Gabriel? Good evening, teacher. Eh, con Martin. Martin, okay. Can you help us, please? Ryan and Raul. Eh, comienzo. <coughs> sí, sí. Okay. Good afternoon, Raul. What are you doing right now? Good afternoon, Ryan. Uh, well, I am planning a video conference. Oh, the conference with the new team in San Salvador. What is, what is our team doing right now? Yes, it is. They are getting ready for the conference in the meeting room. I see. What time do you usually get to your workplace? What the first thing do you do? I usually arrive at 6, 30 a.m. And the first thing I do is to check my email. And you? Well, I right. At 7 or 7 30, independent on traffic, my free activity is to pick up the letters. Good one. Thank you. Very nice pronunciation. Now let's listen to Carly. Who was your partner? A nurse. Is really good. Okay, please. Mm, a nurse. Okay, a nurse. Empiezo yo, empieza usted. Usted. Okay. Good afternoon, Raúl. What are you doing right now? Good afternoon, Ryan. Well, I am planning a video conference. Oh, the conference with the new team in San Salvador. What is our team doing right now? Yes, it is that I getting ready for the conference in the meeting room. I see. What time do you usually get to your workplace? What's the first thing you do? I usually arrive. Exit 30 a.m. and the first thing thing I do is to check my email and you. Well, I arrive at seven o'clock or seven thirty. It depends on traffic. My first activity is the, to pick up the letter. Very nice. You did it really good. Thank you. Vamos a hacer una un énfasis en um, algunas eh, conversaciones que escuché en grupos. Cuando decimos afternoon, afternoon. Cuesta un poquito el after, porque no siempre tenemos la F, ¿verdad? Good, uh, good afternoon, ¿ok? You did it really good, and here we have this. Mm, veamos. Ok, uh, question number one. I'm going to ask to, uh, what if we have Flor? Ok, Flor, Come, uh, question number one. Who gets earlier at the workplace? ¿Quién llega más temprano al trabajo? Okay, let's move here. Who do you think, Raúl or Raya, Flora? Uh, Raúl. Raúl, okay, it's 30, mm -hmm. definitely. Okay, thank you. And here we have uh, Fabricio. What is the topic Raúl and his team are discussing in the conference? ¿Cuál es el tema? Que están hablando mm -hmm. in the conference. Let's check this. Okay. What do you think? And they are planning a video conference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. They are planning a video conference. Okay. Now let's uh, move to this. Uh, here we have should all beauty contests be banned? In this case, I would like to hear. Patty, are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay, ready for your um, answer. And then we have an edit. Okay. If since then the beautiful is superfluous, that money can be used for homes for the elderly. And of farm children of the which the state do you do not take care? Okay, so Patty says that the money used for this event can be used in another things that are needed, right? In what has, uh, thank you. Uh, but now let's listen to Ramirez. 
And then we go with Elizabeth. In my opinion, is neutral. Okay. Neutral. Maybe yes, maybe no. Yes. Okay. What about Elizabeth? Okay, Elizabeth, ready? Sí, ah. ahorita. Okay. Mm -hmm. I consider that is not bad. Would a uh, show do the orient? in other standard and not only in measure the degree of beauty that each participant has up to a certain point. And from my theory, it's then the devalued or discriminate woman. Okay, yes. Very important word, standard. There are some standards in which, uh, for example, in in those kind of contests, uh, digamos, chubby. Chubby significa rellenito, rellenito, okay. Chubby girls don't participate in, in here. Or here is if, if we say fat girls, okay. Las chicas eh, obesas o gorditas, they don't participate definitely because they have standards. They have requirements, tienen requisitos. Requirements. So it is very specific in which they can, uh, they have to be young, tienen que ser jóvenes, and thin, okay? And so on. So uh, definitely it is like, you can see discrimination also in this type of contest. Okay, thank you. Oh, now we have this chart, tenemos este cuadro. How to use simple present versus present continuous. Okay, here we have, we use simple present for general information, routine or activities. O sea que el presente simple lo utilizamos para rutinas, para información general. For example, Francisco, can you help me reading number one and number two, please? I check. Uh, number one in uh, routines. Yes. I check my email, email every morning. Every morning. Number two. He write report about meetings. Thank you. Now here we have um, Patty, number three and number four. She is. She audits in inventories. They arrange meeting. Thank you. Now here we have the other part. We use present continuous for ongoing action that to time of speaking. También utilizamos el present continuum para cosas que están pasando en el momento. Ayer, yesterday, we were talking about things that are going to happen in the future. Cosas que van a pasar en el futuro cercano. Ahora estamos hablando del present continuous, la otra función que tiene de hablar cosas que están pasando en el momento. Ok, Katy, can you help me by reading number one and number two, please? I'm planning a video conference. Y they are getting the document ready. ready. Yes, thank you. Uh -huh. Ven acá, uh, yo reviso mi correo eh, cada mañana y aquí... Estoy planificando una videoconferencia, ¿ok? Uh, they are getting the documents ready. Están alistando los documentos, ¿ok? Now, let's see if he, we are um, Mauricio, number three and number four, please. She is editing the information. The secretary is making a phone call. Yes, the secretary is making a phone call. Mm -hmm. Entonces dice, ella está editando la información, la secretaria está eh, pues eh, haciendo una llamada telefónica. 
Okay, let's continue. And here we have this. Okay. Complete the sentences in present continuous. Ya saben que aquí utilizamos el verbo to be. Y el verbo que está en paréntesis le agregamos eh, ing. Okay. So think about it. And I will need in this case that Roberto helps me. And Aneris as well. Son los primeros. Okay. Number one. Thomas is printing the contract. ¿Verdad? And then here we have here Roberto and Aneris. Two, three, four, five, or six. Uh, six. Okay. They are sending the product to the, what do you say? Where? Warehouse. Warehouse. Mm -hmm. Warehouse. Warehouse que es como bodega. O incluso también puede ser que se me dice. They are sending. Okay, they are sending. Good one. An Aries and then Carly. Number three. Three. He is taking care of everything. Aquí sería taking care of everything. El ING cuando son verbos compuestos de dos palabras, el ING va a ir en la primera, en la primera palabra, ¿ok? Ok, taking care of everything. Carly, and then we go with uh, Katy. Number two. Okay. Shirley is meeting with the boss right now. It's meeting with the boss right now. Okay, yes, Cheryl is meeting. Thank you. Okay, Kathy and Fabrizio. Five. Okay. She's preparing the breakfast. Okay, he's preparing. Thank you. And what about number four, Fabrizio? I am paying uh, attention to the instruction. Yes, I am paying attention to the instruction. Thank you. Okay, um, let me see. Here we have some activities. Díganme ustedes qué cosa, eh, una oración con ING parecida a eso, lo que ustedes quieran, okay? And remember, I am cooking uh, chicken. I am watching Netflix. Siempre debe de haber un, ¿cómo se llama? Un, un complemento. Okay? So, let's see. Um, aparte de eso, aparte de ser la oración que van a hacer, le vamos a agregar un adverbio. Okay? Y aquí es donde se pone un poco más interesante para que nosotros podamos, pues, captarlo. Podemos utilizar cualquiera de estos, ¿ok? Pueden, eh, te voy a poner ejemplos de cuáles podemos utilizar. Mm, Likely, eh, puede ser generously, gently, furiously, Okay, estos son unos ejemplos. Okay, I'm going to show you the others. Le voy a mostrar los otros. In this case, here we have, tenemos otros que son todavía mejores. Podemos utilizar cualquiera de estos. Okay, por ejemplo, for example, lazily es sin ganas, de manera así a la fuerza, como cuando estamos aragancitos. Eh, we can say. Cheerfully es alegremente. We can say happily, también felizmente. Quickly, pueden utilizarlo. Quickly significa rápido. Quickly. Um, puede ser today. Terribly, terriblemente. Están cocinando terriblemente. Eh, carefully significa cuidadosamente. Ok. Pueden decir now. Ok. Eh, let's see. Grimly es de manera bien enjona, como gruñonamente. Recklessly es como sin importancia. Cuando lo hacen, pues así les vale. Accidentally, accidentalmente. Intentionally, 
intencionalmente, ¿verdad? Um, so, you tell me what adverb you select. We're going to start in this case with Aneris and then we go with Elizabeth. Okay, Aneris, what's your sentence? Uh, I am eating urgently. Urgently. Can I have Urgently. Thank mm -hmm. you. Very nice. Elizabeth, and then we go with Francisco. Teacher. Yes. Me levanté y no sé qué están haciendo. No sabes no sabe qué estás haciendo con tu vida. Ok. No. No problem. Lo que vamos a hacer en este momento es hacer una oración. Por ejemplo, I am cooking uh, pasta. Y le agregas cualquiera de estos. Por eso está urgently, carefully, today, ¿verdad? Quickly, happily. ¿Sí? Entonces, eso va a ser. Mm. ¿Ok, Elisa? Cualquier, cualquier acción que, sea, que puedas imaginarte hacer. ¿Ok? Pero cuando es go, eh, con, con present continuous. ¿Ok? Ajá. Ok. Eh, te voy a dar tiempo. Escuchar okay. Tema. Okay, we go with Kathy and Carly. Um, I am watching YouTube now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Carly and Francisco. No, no, pasa Francisco. Okay. And I am driving greenly. <laughs> Con sueño, qué bárbaro. Okay, Francisco and Fabricio. No ready. No ready. Okay. Fabricio and Roberto. Um, I am driving from the airport to the university quickly. Good. Ya tiene que meterle. Ahí. Roberto. <laughs> Roberto en flor. Yo estoy perdido porque no sé cuál de todos esos ocupa. <laughs> Bien, estuve dando unos ejemplos de cuáles podrían utilizar. Mm -hmm. eh, podrían utilizar. I am, I, am, I am playing basketball weekly. Good, thank you. I am eh, watching. Ok, Gabriel. And after Gabriel, we go with Marvin. Be careful. Careful is carefully, cuidadosamente. Ok. Yes. Ok. Ajá. Entonces, ¿cómo sería la oración? Porque estamos hablando de oraciones más una de estas palabras. Ah, ok. Eh, yo la dejé. I'm drinking beers carefully. <laughs> Good one. Sí, para que no te caiga. <laughs> nice. Marvin. Okay, Marvin, if you're not ready, maybe we have Elizabeth, or is Ajá, pero puedo ocupar cualquier palabra de esas, mm -hmm. o solo los adverbios. Cualquiera de estos adverbios. Yo di algunos ejemplos cuáles pueden utilizar. Por ejemplo, intentionally, accidentally. ¿Verdad? Uh, extremely, urgently, carefully. ¿Significa que no puedo ser un never? No, porque estás utilizando el verbo, con el, el presente continuo. El presente continuo es, yo estoy cocinando, yo nunca estoy cocinando, no tiene sentido. <risa> ya, por ejemplo, yo estoy cocinando pollo cuidadosamente o rápidamente. Ya. Ok. Sí. No estás lista. No. Oh. Ok, Francisco. Ready. Thank you, my friend. I check it in the story Google. Good one. Thank you. That's it. And here we have some others. Bien, vamos a ver entonces. Here we have this. Let's go to 
um, do you think that couples should live together before marriage? Why or why not? Okay, so it is kind of interesting how you can give your opinion in different forms. And remember, it's your opinion. It doesn't mean that it's going to be right or wrong, okay? It's your opinion, it's your opinion, okay? So in this case, maybe we can have, um, let's see, Flor, are you ready to, to share your opinion? Yes, teacher. Okay, please. Uh, I think that couples nowadays should live together before marriage, mariage, because they are many separate separation they show get to know each other a little a little more before getting married mm -hmm. very good okay so they should uh, get to know when we see most get to know is conocerse okay so that's uh, true there are a lot of divorce in separation, okay? Uh, break up es cuando, como no, cuando nosotros decimos cortar. Ah, ya cortamos. Okay, so we break up, pero en pasado sería broke up, sería así. Es un verbo irregular. We broke up yesterday. Ayer cortamos, ayer terminamos la relación. Y fue una gran lágrimas. So imagine, those things... Eh, happen a lot okay let's listen to uh, one of the the experts that we have here fabricio okay tell us from your experience the experience francisco and pero antes vamos con fabricio los dos vamos a ver menos más eso okay fabricio um it depends on the maturity of each couple the who say the living together before marriage is bare? What they really do is evade, uh, evade responsibilities in the face of the first adversity or when they get tired. Okay. And uh, maybe these generations are different from the others that I can see that this comic generation, estas generaciones, eh, bueno, creo que no nos incluimos. People evade problems. And when uh, people see difficulties, they escape. And life, is, it is a matter of solving some problems and solving difficulties. Resolver los problemas y las dificultades. But people sometimes, bye bye. It didn't work. No funcionó. Okay. So it usually happens. Cuando decimos eso funciona, es it works. O cuando decimos it doesn't work. Aquí no me refiero que algo trabaja, sino que funciona. Cuando decimos esto, it works, funciona. Ok. Cuando decimos it doesn't work, no funciona. Ok, we're going to listen to Francisco and then Iris. Que, uh, tenemos por acá. Ok, Francisco. Ok. In my opinion, not correct. But why is it more common to see couples together before marriage? Marriage, yes. It is common. Nowadays it's common. I have seen that and it is okay, depends on everybody's decision, depends on the decision they can think. But I have seen a lot of cases in which people don't want to get married. La gente no se quiere casar. They want just to have family and live together, but depends on everybody. Okay. Uh, what about Ceci? Are you there? Good evening or night? Hello. Yeah, good evening. <laughs> Good evening, teacher. Yes. Um, <clears throat> about the question. Yes. Uh, creo que ya no te escuchamos, Ceci. Hello. Ahora. 
Eh, ahora sí un poco. Ah, vaya. Um, I think yes, but it depends on the decision of what living under the same roof before marriage increase the probability. No sé cómo se pronuncia esa palabra. O sea, me ha trabado la lengua. Probability. Probably. Probability. Uh -huh. <laughs> sí. Probability. Okay. The probability mm -hmm. of maintaining a stable long term relationship after marriage. Okay. And, um, I believe in marriage. Of course. When there is a real commitment on the part of the two people, I think it's very nice ritual to celebrate the union of two people. Mm -hmm. The union. Ah, union. Porque union es a boy. Okay, union. <laughs> yes. Okay. yes. Well, in ambos casos, lloras. Yes, um, as Ceci is saying, very important word. Short term is a corto plazo. Y long term is a largo plazo. Uh -huh. There should be a commitment. Debe de haber un compromiso. A real commitment. And uh, as uh, Ceci says, is important marriage. And living under the same roof, it is not the same as being boyfriend or girlfriend. ¿Verdad? Vivir bajo el mismo techo. Totalmente uh -huh. diferente al noviazgo. So... People uh, like scare or people is afraid of some commitment. And maybe mm -hmm. they have lived together dur during a lot of years. They have kids and they don't want to get married. La gente que no se quiere casar, ellos tienen un montón de hijos, okay? Y las deudas las comparten, but anyway, depends on everybody, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Thank you, Susie, very nice. We have okay. another expert in here. Bueno, aquí todos son expertos, okay? Let's listen now to Carly. Okay, Carly. Okay, teacher. Uh, I don't think so. And in my religious point of view, it is necessary to get married in order to live as a couple and people must leave their parents until the time they get married is agree then more than a ceremony it's it is a com commitment that couples acquire and consolidate the commitment that must exit between the two Yes, definitely. It is not easy to, to, to give that step. That is a puzzle. I know it is difficult, but it comes with responsibilities. And responsibilities is not just one day of wedding. But it's not about expenses. It's about commitment. Definitely it is. Thank you, Carly. Okay, let's listen to Kathy. Tenemos otra experta por acá que nos va a dar cátedra. Ok, Katy. ¿Sabes? No. No te escuchamos, Katy. Está preparando su discurso ahorita. En mi caso, yes, because it adds also service to get to now the couple there and see if they can have a good coexistence. En mi caso, For, for example, um, I have been in a relationship for seven years. Okay. For living together. Um, at the end of this year, I will be married. Excellent. We are in uh, day. Estamos invitados. Yeah. Yeah, in okay, nice. Yes. And as a world, well, with ups and downs, it But it's, it's good. Yes, it's positive, Kathy. It's, it mm -hmm. is really good. So it's nice because after seven years, 
you are going to, you are taking this decision and it is good because you have seven years of good things and bad things right yes uh, nice and and lovely and happy moments and very uh, confusing a lot of discussions and i can imagine a lot of things but well it is good that you're going to 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 make that real okay thank you Katia. Okay. experience Okay, and then we're going to listen to um, Marvin, please. Okay, teacher. Uh, my answer is yes, because before a stupid down the yield you give yourself the opportunity to obtain your partner social and emotional security. And with a very important factor. Yes, very important factor. And sometimes we are we are familiar with trials. Estamos como un tanto familiarizados como las las pruebas gratuitas, like for example, antivirus and Netflix one month and Spotify and all those things. And maybe we try and we see if it works, so if it works or not. But human relationships are so complicated. It is not that you're going to know a person for one year or two years. And Kathy también lo puede decir. More than five, 10 or 15 years. And it is a matter of knowing a person day by day. Conocer una persona día a día. But um, the way or the whatever you decide, it is good if you are you are sure of the, the commitment. Si están seguro del compromiso, adelante, no problem. Okay, we continue later. And here we have this. Let me see, we're going to have a short conversation. In this case, we're going to have this. Conversation of present continuous. Este present continuous, in este caso, si se trata de hablar de lo que están haciendo ahora mismo. Tenemos acá. Um, here we have, let me see. Conversation one. Where are you? ¿Dónde estás? Where are you? I am working inside. I am writing a letter to my friend. I am telling him about my life and my job. Are you using the computer? I am not using the computer because I like to handwrite letters. My hand is getting tired, though. Though, yes, that's tired. And conversation two. Where is Mary? Mary is cooking in the kitchen. She is chopping some vegetables because she's making a vegetable soup. How is she making it? She's reading a recipe, a recipe, perdón, entonces, recipe. She's uh, reading a recipe and following the instructions inside. She's enjoying herself. Bien, la, la, la uno le pregunta, ¿dónde estás? Estoy trabajando adentro. Luego le, le dice, estoy escribiendo una letra a mi amigo. Le estoy contando sobre mi vida y mi nuevo trabajo. Y le preguntan, ¿estás usando la computadora? No estoy usando la computadora porque me gusta escribir las cartas a, a mano. En mi mano, aunque mi mano también ya se está cansando. Dos, ¿dónde está Mary? Mary está cocinando en la cocina, para la redundancia. Ella está picando algunos vegetales porque está cocinando una sopa de vegetales. ¿Cómo lo está haciendo? Ella está leyendo una receta en, eh, y siguiendo las indicaciones adentro. Ella está disfrutando. Ok. Inside. Inside. About. Using. Tired. Tough. Vegetables, vegetables, recipe, recipe, inside. Creo que la que más cuesta es esta, recipe, recipe, okay? 
maybe an Aries can help us by giving some thank you and Aries as always como siempre muy puntual so uh, see you in a moment my dear friends we're going to practice a little bit at this present continuous
Okay, let's listen to some of your nice pronunciation. And in this case, we're going to have here, maybe we can have Ivania. Hello, are you okay? Yes, teacher. Okay, okay good. Who is your partner? It is. Okay, it's your turn. It is. Si gusta, comienza usted. Okay. Uh, conversation one. Where are you? Walking inside. I'm writing a letter to my friend. I'm telling him about my life and my new job. Are you using the computer? I'm not using the computer. I like to hand write letters. My hand is getting tired, so. Okay, thank you, very nice, perfect. Okay, now in this case, maybe we can have some other pronunciation. Um, let's listen to Flor, who was your classmate? Fabricio. Okay, very nice. Okay, can you help me with number two? Please. Okay. Fabricio. Hello, Fabricio. Okay, Fabricio. Es que me estaban dando mi jalón de orejas porque sí. dije, dije que tenía esto, mucho, mucho pesaba. Ah, ya, como frodo te sentías. Okay. Nice. Es muy precioso. <laughs> really nice. Okay, let's okay. do it. Well, conversa conversation tuba. Yeah. Yes. Okay, where is Mary? Mary is cooking the kitchen. She is shopping some vegetables because she is making a vegetable soup. How is she making it? She is reading a recipe and following the instruction inside she is enjoying herself. Very nice, thank you. Chopping, chop, chopping. Es cortar, ¿verdad? Y vegetables, vegetables son los vegetales, ¿ok? Really nice. We have just 27 minutes, 20, eh, bueno, 37, 37 minutos y terminamos. Let's move to the other part and here we have this. Um, remember, ayer estuve explicando acerca de eso, ¿verdad? Tenemos el will, que es para el futuro. I will go to the beach in December, o sea, un plan a largo plazo. I will. Then here we have going to. Go to the going to. I am going. Let me see. I am going to go to the beach on Saturday 28. ¿Verdad? Voy a ir a la playa el sábado 28, aunque sería 27 en este caso. Present continuous. I am use, I am going to the beach this weekend. Voy a la playa este fin de semana. Y el presente continuo sería, I am drinking water, estoy bebiendo agua. Entonces, repito, will es para futuro a largo plazo. Going es un futuro para un poco antes. Y el presente continuo es un futuro como que ya casi pasa. El otro tipo de presente continuo es cuando estamos diciendo las cosas que estamos haciendo en este preciso momento. ¿Ok? So, in this case, uh, here we have some exercises. Tenemos algunos ejercicios, ¿verdad? Ya habíamos visto esta parte, ¿verdad? Vamos a trabajar ahora en la negativa también, ¿verdad? Entonces, es fácil, easy. For negatives, we have to use only the word not. So, vamos a utilizar la palabra not, ¿verdad? Y podemos ver en este caso. Okay. En lugar de decir he is not coming, podemos decir he isn't, como ustedes quieran, pero la negación, the negative word is going to be after verb be, después del verbo to be, I am not, you are not, he is not, we are not, ¿verdad? they are not, así de así, ¿verdad? Um, so, we're going to have this practice, vamos a poner esta práctica, primero, vamos a poner esta 
Okay. We're going to order, vamos a ordenar un par de, 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 de estas oraciones. Okay. Le vamos a agregar el verbo to be y el, el verbo lo vamos a decir con ing al final. Okay. So in this case, we're going to start with Marvin and then we're going to listen to Patty. Okay, from one to ten. Tenemos que ordenar la teacher o ya está casi ordenada. Solo le vas a agregar el verbo to be y el verbo que está ahí lo vas a lo vas a decir con ing. Okay. Number three. Number three. Number three. They they are playing football. Yes. Playing. 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 Thank you. Okay, really good. Uh, football. Sorry, it's a bit. Right, so again, football. Okay. We go with Patty, and after Patty, we go with Elizabeth. Number two. Acuérdense de la cual me están diciendo. Okay. Okay, number two. He is smoking a cigar. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we go with Elizabeth and then Kathy. Okay. Number four. <laughs> Number four. It is raining. Okay, Barbara, la más fácil. This rain. Ahí estaba. <laughs> es cierto, es cierto, ahí está. Okay, we go, we go with Kathy and then Iris. Um, number six. Number six. Bob is reading a book. Nice. Okay, very nice. Easy. Okay, Iris and then we go with Carly. Number eight. Number eight. You you are eating an apple. Nice, thank you. Okay, we go with Carly and then we go with Christy. Number seven. Yeah. We are walking to work. Perfect. We are walking to work. Okay, Christy, are you ready? Okay. Um, I need write a letter. Siempre dime el número. Five. Perdón. Five, five. I need write a letter. Uh -huh. ¿Cuál es el verbo to be que vamos a utilizar ahí? Mm. And is and is writing a letter. Okay, let's listen now to Aneris and then Fabrizio. Uh, number number ten. Ten. I am not waiting for the bus. Lo vamos a hacer en afirmativo. Después lo vamos a cambiar. I'm waiting for the bus. Estás con todo, pero relax. Thank you. Okay, now let's listen to Fabricio. Uh, number... Then Francisco. Number... Number nine. Okay. They are running around the park. Okay, and Francisco, number one, can you help me? I am sitting on, on chair. Good, I am sitting on a chair. Okay. Vamos ahora a hacer las negativas. Las mismas personas que me dijeron esas, solo le vamos a agregar el not después del verbo to. Okay. Oh, Frank, vos es la clave del éxito. Let's do it negative, number one. I am not sitting on a chair. Perfect. 
Who said number two? ¿Quién dijo el número dos? Sí, yo. Ok. He is not smoking a cigar. Thank you. Number three. They are not playing football. Perfect. Puede ser contraído también, Tisha. They are not or they aren't. Okay. How you want. Okay, now let's listen to uh, number four. Ah, la más fácil. Oh, it's not raining. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. La vieja confiable. Okay, thank you. Eh, vamos, Christy. Solo le vas a agregar el not. Okay, maybe it's not ready. Teacher, no puse, no, me levanté en ese momento, que es lo que tengo que hacer, perdón. Ok, agregar el not, agregar el not en esta oración, en la que uh, hiciste. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. ¿Alguna idea? Number five. Uh -huh. um, five. And not reading a letter. Uh -huh. And it's not writing a letter. Uh -huh. Thank you. Number six. Gracias. Okay. Let's listen to Wow. Okay, here is there is uh, adelante. Um, number six. Bob isn't reading a book. Thank you. Let's listen to number seven now. Uh, we are not walking to work. Perfect. Number eight. You. Nobody. Nice as a responsible. Si pasaron. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's move to number nine. They aren't running around the park. Perfect. Okay. And number 10. I'm not waiting for the bus. Okay, the bus. Creo que la ocho era de Elizabeth, si no me equivoco. Es posible. Ok. Oh, no era mía. La mía era la cuatro. Ajá, no era la tuya. Ok. Who was number eight? <risa> hey, ¿Quién no me la muero? La oreja. Who was? Mira, vamos a ver. Quiero ver quién me falta. Flor, ¿ya pasaste? Iris, era no tuya. No dije ninguna, pero <risa> you are eating an apple. Ok, you are not eating an apple. Very nice. Ok. Let's move to another part. No fue Ivania. Ivania fue. Ah, espérense. Vamos a no, no había dicho ninguna. <laughs> Están tirando ahí la, la pelota. Ok. So here we have, um, we're going to use these verbs in here. Ok, easy. We're going to use this here. Play. Y como siempre, Vamos a hacerlas en negativa. Vamos a hacerlas en negativa. Ok. It's easy. So, um, let's listen to some of you. In this case, vamos a comenzar con Roberto. And then we go with Patty. Ah, Patty, era la de la anterior. Ok, Roberto. No, number two era la mía. Ah, vaya. Me dice cómo salen ahí, ¿no? Indignado. Me dice de cargo. Indignado, la parte. Ok. Ok, Roberto. Number two. Number two. We are not uh, playing a computer game. Thank you. Ok. Bien. Pati, lista para la acción. Y after Pati, yes. we go with Ivana, que también me la hizo. Okay. Number one. One. Alexander is not watching a film. Solo sería watching. Thank you. Ivania, que me hizo la mexicana de Anelis. Ok, number three. The dog. The dog is not barking at the cat. Yes, barking is ladrar. Bark is ladrar. Okay, and we go with Aneris, and after Aneris, we go with Jocelyn. Number five. Number five. Philip and Johnny 
not singing a song. Y el verbo to be? Uh, ah, no sé. Philip and Johnny are? Yes. Not singing a song. Thank you, very nice. Uh, Jocelyn, can you, and then Iris. Okay, maybe Jocelyn's uh, busy. Okay, we go with Iris, and after Iris, Gabriel. Yes, Iris. No te escuchamos. Okay. Maybe we have some difficulties. Okay. And let's listen. Okay. 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 And his sister are not to helping the mother. Aquí solo sería helping, ¿verdad? Tú eso lo puedes. Ah, okay. Ajá, porque no está conjugado. Carly, and okay. then we go with Iris. And Peggy is not drag, dragging. Drawing. Uh -huh. Drawing. Bien raro eso. Drawing. Drawing. Bien raro. Okay, and it is no. Oh, yeah. Oh, you see? Yeah. Uh, number six. Mm -hmm. Mary is not washing her hair. Her hair, yes. It's not watching her hair. Thank you. Very nice. Let's listen now to uh, Fabricio and Marvin. Uh, number 10. Number 10. You are not learning. The poem by heart. Cuando decimos by heart, significa de memoria, aunque te dice de corazón. For example, you have to learn some statistics or you have to learn uh, some information by heart, de memoria. Okay, let's listen to Marvin and then Kathy. Number seven. seven. I am not talking to Doris. I am not talking. El two, aquí no le vamos a poner atención porque es simplemente está conjugar. Ok, Katy, number four. Katy, vos fuiste, ¿verdad? La que no me hiciste el anterior. No, number six. Ah, <laughs> my. Number six. Se quedó a quedar en mi impunidad. Ok. Ya voy a revisar, um, ya voy a revisar este video. <laughs> Mañana, bueno, más tarde lo voy a revisar. Voy a ver quién me. Mexicana. Okay, Kathy, number four. Okay, and Peter is not feeding. He mm -hmm. is, is rabbit. He is rabbit. Okay, very nice. Here we have this easy, easy. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And now let's move to another part of the questions. Do you think that a couple should live together before marriage? Why, why not? In this case, maybe we can listen to Roberto, please. Are you ready, Roberto? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Firstly, it is, it is of utmost importance to live to like with your couple before getting married finds additional to have the coexistence between to the two will make as if we have chosen. Well, the person with one, we will live the rest of our life. Okay. 
the rest of your life is forever. Yeah, yeah, well, depends, <laughs> depends, of course, yes, depends on you. But in this case, it is not an easy choice. It is not a simple decision as well, because it includes family, your family, uh, your time is going to be different from what was. Thank you. Okay, now let's listen to Patty. Are you ready with this? Yes. Please. I believe that every young is free to choose how they live. Mm -hmm. So depends on everybody. That's what you say. Depende de cada quien. A eso te refieres. Yeah. Okay, yes, depends on, on every person. Okay. Now let's listen to, let me see. Uh, Anaris, what about you? <laughs> uh, it depends on the values and belief of each person. I am in the process of divorce. Okay. So uh, you are an yeah. expert. Yes, but I, uh, but I agree with the marriage, although my failed after 10 years, but it's a great commitment, want to marry the character, not the physical. Good point. When you're talking about the character, okay, the personality, and the temperament, okay? El temperamento, the way, la manera, the way people react to good things and to problems. La manera en como la gente reacciona a cosas buenas y a los problemas, right? It is different, the personality. Interesting. Yes, <laughs> yes. And imagine, sometimes we can know a person for deep, for very, uh, for Many years, conocemos a personas por muchos años, and suddenly, de repente, we notice different um, different aspects of their characters, temperament. So, mm -hmm, it is like a surprise. So, thank you for sharing your experience, Anaris, and it is good that you said that you believe in Anaris, even you have like difficult times. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, what about uh, Christy? Are you ready, Christy? Or you need time? Okay, maybe not. Let's just, Jocelyn, are you okay? Because Jocelyn was like moving from the same. Camino. Okay, Elizabeth, what about you? Um, I think it depends on the principles that each individual adhere from childhood or on the paradigm at the fin in the environment. Mm -hmm. That's it. It depends on the education, the education that we receive but also the environment, I mean, depende de, de, del ambiente and a lot of things, yes. Thank you, uh, Elizabeth. And we go now with Gabriel. Thank you, sir. My opinion for me is yes. Although there are people who, who are conservative of past tradition, but today there are many people who are like this without taking into account this present. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And very important words. There are people that they follow the traditions. Como siguen las tradiciones, they follow the traditions and they are pushed. Quiere decir, 
que están como presionados. Push es presionar, como presionar el botón. But when you said pushed, it is like we, we are waiting for the validation. A veces hay gente que espera validación. And that's something that has incidence. Okay? Something uh, important that has incidence. Okay? So, well, thank you. Important words. And Ivania, are you ready to give your opinion about this? Yes, teacher. Okay, so tell us, quantum about the experience. No. <laughs> no yet. Okay. Uh, yes, I agree when both parties want the same thing, but it should not be taken as a court requirement that it is not achieved, we are not complete as, as a person. Okay, yes, very, very important. In this case, we are talking about commitment. And if you have like specific goals, también cosas tienen metas específicas y todo eso, that is really helpful, como que yo bastante también. Thank you, Ivania, very nice. El lo último que vamos a ver es lo siguiente. Okay. Borrow versus lend. Ambos eh, verbos significan prestar. Significan prestar, borrow versus lend. Pero en el caso de borrow y también de lend, el uso es un tanto diferente. Significan lo mismo, pero su uso es diferente. Tenemos lo siguiente acá. Can you help me, Fabricio, with this the instruction? Borrow. Borrow. To take something and then return it. Okay. Can you read this, please? May I borrow your pen? Thank you. Entonces, borrow is take something and then return it. Tomar algo y luego devolverlo. Okay, borrow. May I borrow your pen? Entonces, tenemos acá eso. Ahora vamos con lend. En mi caso de land, aquí tenemos Francisco. Help me, please, with land. To give something and to get it back. Okay. To give something, dar algo y luego obtenerlo de regreso. Cosa que no siempre pasa. Yes. And that's really sad. Yes. And, and especially with money. Okay. Be careful. So, yeah. in this case, here we have this, could you lend me your pen? Entonces, des en cuenta de esto. Cuando utilizamos el borrow, es may I borrow or can I borrow? Esa es la cuestión. May I borrow, can I borrow? Pero cuando utilizamos el lend, sería could you or can you? Esta es la clave. Aquí dice, evita decir, please, borrow me something. No se puede decir eso, eso no tendría sentido, ¿verdad? En este caso, sí. En este caso, sí podemos decir esto. Please lend me that book. I lend you a dollar yesterday. Vamos a seguir viendo otros ejemplos antes que ustedes hagan, eh, pues, su oración. Vamos a ver acá. Borrow versus lend. Okay, Kathy, can you help me please reading this? To take something, to take something, something. From, from someone and give it back later. Okay, I need. I need to return the books and borrow it from the library. Library. Mm -hmm. Continue. Library. Did he borrow? Did he borrow money from the bank to buy his house? Thank you. Very nice. In this case, we have Carly. Len. To give something. To give something to someone that they bring back later. Bring. Bring back bring later. Back later. The library. 
the library will lend you five uh, books for two weeks. The bank lent him and twenty thousand. Twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Okay, thank you. Very nice. Así que sencillo. Esa es la clave del éxito. Vamos a utilizar. Quiero que me hagan una oración con el May I borrow your o también pueden decir can y en el otro tenemos could you lend me your o en lugar de could pueden decir can ahora en lugar de you podemos decir can I borrow the the what the pencil okay can i borrow the pencil y la otra es could you lend me or can you lend me a color okay cualquiera de los dos necesito que me hagan una oración ya sea utilizando es cualquiera de estas frases o esas um, you can talk about money. Pueden hablar de dinero. You can talk about objects in the classroom. Objects in the classroom. Clase. You can talk about different things. Objects. Específicamente objetos. If you want, may I borrow your car? ¿Me prestas tu carro? Mm, that's really difficult. Okay. Could, okay. Could you lend me your house? May I borrow your, what? Your cell phone para revisar ok and a lot of things ok think about an object piensen un objeto entonces lo que van a hacer es que van a utilizar cualquiera de estas dos o cualquiera de estas dos ok so depends on you cuando vayan pasando uno por uno one by one I'm going to take the attendance list esa va a ser la lista de asistencia ok and we're going to finish va a depender de cada quien Y cuando me diga su oración, es una pregunta, ¿me prestas? ¿Verdad? ¿Me prestas tal cosa? ¿Puedes prestarme tal cosa? Ok. That's it. I don't know if you have noticed, no sé si se han dado cuenta, pero aquí en el sabor tenemos una duda o una confusión cuando dice, Carly me prestó 20 dólares. Cuando decimos así, la gente lo piensa de dos maneras. Carly me prestó 10 dólares. Como que Carly me dio los, los 20 dólares. No, 10, los 20 dólares. O que Carly me pidió prestado 20 dólares. Ya, entonces cuando decimos Carly me prestó es que dio. ¿Verdad? Básicamente. Pero normalmente como que nos confundimos. Normalmente. Y aquí es bastante práctico. Me I borrow? Can I borrow? Can you lend me? ¿Verdad? So, uh, let's listen to some of you. Este tema también lo vamos a seguir viendo mañana, así rápidamente, con los ejercicios. Elizabeth, are you ready with your question? Ready, teacher. Perfect. Could you let me your computer? Okay, nice. Thank you. Flor, what about you? Present. Could Thank you me. lend me your debit? Okay, good one. What about Francisco? Present. Can you lend me your tools? Mm -hmm. Your tools. Eso es nunca regresa. Tools, las herramientas. Mm -hmm. yes. Todas se me han perdido. Sí, yes, yes. And something sad is that tools are expensive. Lo, lo triste es que las herramientas son caras. Okay, so what? I understand. I understand you, Francisco. Okay. Eh, Gabriel, bueno, no se te han perdido, te la han robado. Ok, Gabriel. I'm Cambiaron sorry. de dueño. Cambiaron yeah. de dueño nada más. That's it. Ok. Eh, Gabriel, please. Yes. Eh, can I borrow the watch? Ok, good one. Now, Ceci, are you there? Ceci, are you there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
<laughs> um, may I borrow your? Let's see, sir. Cell phone. <laughs> okay, eso suena como vagabundo. Thank you. <laughs> Ivania. <laughs> Thank you, Ceci. Good evening. Um, can you lend me your blouse? The rock. Okay. Yes. What about Carla? Could you lend me your science book? No, oh, good. Nice. What about Kathy? Um, may I borrow your cell phone? Okay, Kevin. Okay. Hold on. Marvin. Present. Can I borrow the phone? I'm sorry, can I borrow? Can I borrow the phone? Thank you. Fabricio, your phone. Could you lend me the keys of your car? Wow, that's really, that's really strange. <laughs> Okay, nice. And let's listen now to Patty. Okay, Patty. Can I borrow your desk? Can I borrow your desk? Good. And Roberto, are you there? Yeah. Can I borrow your phone? Okay, good. And Christy. Okay, Christy, are you ready? No. Oh, let's listen to Jocelyn. Okay, and Aneris. Could you lend me your motorcycle? Your, wow, your motorcycle. Nice, nice. Okay, and we're going to finish until here, my friends. So nice. Remember that we have just eight classes. Ya casi solo son ocho clases. Ya casi nos, nos acercamos al final. ¿verdad? I know you're tired. Están cansados de la vida. Everything. But remember to complete the homework. Pueden terminar las tareas. And see you tomorrow. Eh, Fabricio se queda unos minutos. And the rest. Okay, my friends. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Okay, Fabricio. Is there any topic that maybe you think that it is kind of complicated or you want a, a review? Considera que hay algo que se necesita que sea una revisión de lo que hemos visto de los temas. No, eh, por el momento están bastante bien. Eh, incluso eh, hace un par de años, como le comentaba a algunos compañeros que venimos de, del módulo pasado, que cuando yo hice el, el examencito este de nivelación, me recomendaban que hiciera el intermedio 6. Yo aquí, dije, aquí con, con inglés corporativo o con, sí, con, con inglés corporativo. Y yo, wey, me van a fusilar ajá, ajá. en dos patadas. Así que decidí empezar en el, en el intermedio 1. Uh -huh. eh, completamos el nivel intermedio, pero estamos hablando del 2018, 19, a próximo. Uh -huh. Entonces, en eso vino la pandemia el año pasado. Entonces, sí, como que. Continuaste ahí, ¿verdad? <ríe> Entonces, cuando me presentó la oportunidad, yo dije, no, güey, mejor empiezo desde lo básico, porque eh, en el intermedio sí sentí bastantes lagunas que se supone que tendría que haberlas dominado. Y nada, no, dije, entonces mejor empecemos eh, de cero, así como, como con el curso de, de Excel, que algunas cosas ya las sabía, pero no es lo mismo empezar desde lo básico eh, le decía yo a uno de, lo, de los profesores que, 
Eh, por ejemplo, yo bajé un libro de macros y a pura lectura hice mis, mis primeras macros y me diseñé mi primer programa de macros. Cuando ya estábamos en la clase, eh, bah, podemos hacer esto, 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 y yo así. Y yo dándome riata, haciéndolo bien bonito. Pero, o sea, eh, había una forma sencilla y una forma complicada. Entonces, yo me fui complicada, por la forma complicada. Entonces, por ejemplo, esta, estos dos verbos, eh, len y borrow, eh, ni por cerca los había oído. Así Pero que ahí, creo que está bastante bien, fíjate. Yo te noto bastante fluidez y seguridad. Yo creo que eso es lo que te va a reafirmar eh, eh, comenzar. Lo que ya, ya lo lo que tenías. Quizás, eh, quizás algo que es como que un tanto diferente a otros cursos es que esto es un, para el trabajo, pues que hay visibles, entonces el vocabulario es técnico. Por el hecho mm. de que es en el área laboral. No es como en el academia. Que, hey, tell me about yourself. Tell me about your past time, your hobbies. Y todo eso. ¿Verdad? Pero creo que mm. está bien. De hecho, eh, parte de mi trabajo como, como ingeniero de servicio. Es... Eh, todos los manuales eh, vienen eh, en inglés. Entonces... Eh, está familiarizado con varios verbos, ¿verdad? Con indicaciones uh -huh. y todo eso. Pero, 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 Incluso me comentaba un compañero, eh, porque, bueno, es precisamente el martes, martes, miércoles y jueves, tengo otro curso virtual con la, con la corporación de, de Xerox. Uh -huh. Entonces, hoy me habló un compañero y me dice, mira, y el curso de la semana pasada, ¿cómo lo hiciste yo? Mira, yo le dije a, a Gary Lee, le digo, que fue mi instructor, eh, I speak in English, but not very well. Eh, y ahí, buscando el, el traductor, eh, de hecho le puse, eh, me cuesta bastante hablarlo, pero estoy eh, en, en proceso. Uh -huh. Ah, don't worry, me Entonces había, en, por ejemplo, en mi caso, porque había un hindú, un americano, y creo que un alemán eh, y se oía acaba la diferencia sí, de, sí, de, se nota a, a, un hub, de un hub, y así uy, uh -huh. qué raro el inglés pero sí, por lo menos lo habla lo, 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 sí pero lo de los inglés es como que bien para agarrar la palabra te tardas más todavía Ajá. entonces en mi caso eh, él se dirigía y lo hacía más despacio para que pudiera yo captar la uh -huh. la, la, idea, la idea la idea central entonces, eh, igual, siempre estuvimos, eh, ya sea por correo o por chat, eh, que yo le contestaba porque le, le agarraba la idea a lo que él me decía, pero para poderle transmitir la respuesta. Uh -huh. eh, si es, eh, es algo técnico, sí. Eh, por ejemplo, los modelos de equipos, eh, las partes que, que utilizamos de, del Global Service Network o del ProLibro ahora que ya ha quedado desfasado el, el Explorer. Eh, siempre me decía, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Eh, pero igual, eh, después me decía este compañero que eh, le hicieron una pregunta y se quedó congelado. Uh -huh. Se la volvió a repetir. Eh, y, el, y le dijo you speak in English no le dijo ah I'm sorry le dijo this discourse is uh, only English entonces le presentó una pantalla donde supuestamente lo van a pasar para los de habla hispana entonces mm -hmm. antes de que él se desconectara el anfitrión lo había sacado de, sí, del okay, grupo okay, uh -huh. entonces eh, yo dije uy ahí el martes tengo yo la conferencia bueno, igual la misma metodología. Eh, sí, hablo, hablo inglés, pero no muy bien y eh, un poquito para hablarlo. Uh -huh. Es más, ya tengo ahí mi cartilla de, de posibles respuestas para, sí, para sí, que no me vayan a batear. Es de tener opciones. 
la verdad es que, mira, lo que yo trato de, de enseñarles, por lo menos sé que algunos de acá están un poco avanzaditos, si te das cuenta, tienen que tener cierta fluidez, uh -huh. pero piensan también... Sí, Aneris tiene una buena fluidez. Al... fluidez uh -huh. Siento que también Roberto no, no anda tan mal, ni, ni tampoco David, solo que, que se lo pasa manejando, cuando va con la, en las clases, pero a lo que voy es que sí han decidido comenzar desde, 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 desde lo básico, para captar, entonces yo trato de darle vocabulario también que le sirva a ustedes. Uh -huh. Entonces, si me quedo solo con lo básico, se me van a aburrir más todavía de lo que puede ser, porque son Ay. como bastante prácticos, ¿verdad? Como una profesora de inglés que tenía eh, en cuarto grado, ya, ya en los 90, eh, teníamos un libro, no recuerdo cómo se llamaba el libro, pero cuando la primera lección, Hello, my name is Coco, my nose, My mouth, my ear, my eyes, y nosotros así. Y este es el inglés que nos tienen que dar. Y así nos fueron llevando. Uh -huh. Y decía mi profesor de, de último año eh, que él se sentía orgulloso porque la mayoría, bueno, mi promoción, eh, no habíamos salido tan, tan pateados eh, en inglés. Uh -huh. Entonces, eh, más que todo porque, aunque, como yo le digo a un compañero, Tal vez no lo hablo tan bien como yo quisiera, pero por lo menos eh, yo me siento, me mandan la documentación y empiezo. Y me dicen, ¿y qué entendés? Sí, mira, aquí sí, estaba el traducido. Mira, tenés que hacer esto, buscar la fuente de poder, eh, tenés que revisar la LED, la fuente de baja, la fuente de alta, tenés que darte este resultado, tenés que medir este voltaje. Va, y eso es todo. Repetímelo, yo sí. Sí, sí, pero fíjate que ese es el inglés que el que manejas, es uh -huh. el inglés técnico que normalmente se les enseña en Aeromán y en otros lugares en donde tienen que manejar eh, diferentes tipos de indicaciones, uh -huh. eh, cuidado con tu de maquinaria y los manuales. Entonces, pues, yo con los manuales manejas, tengo, uh -huh. perdón. No, ya manejas bastante bien eso entonces, en esa parte. Sido... Sí, sí, prácticamente yo tengo como 15 años de estar con, con Xerox. Entonces, eh, al principio no le tomaba así la, la importancia, porque me decían, vaya, aquí están tus herramientas, y aquí está tu, tu pequeño manual de, de servicio. Entonces, cuando bajaba, cuando bajaba con, con el paquetito, empezaba a buscar el código de error. Yo, ah, ok. Y así me fui más o menos familiarizando. Ya del 2000, yo, cuando regresé, 2009, 10, 12. Ya cuando regresé en el 2012, cuando hubo una transición de, de Xerox, documentos digitales, de foto a PBS, eh, ya lo tomé con más, eh, con más seriedad porque más seriedad. Todos, todos los entrenamientos eh, estaban eh, completamente en inglés. Entonces, como yo me movía de San Salvador a San Miguel, cuando regresaba para San Salvador, me todo el fin de semana, eh, me echaba hasta las 2, 3, 4 de la mañana, avanzando en lo más que pudiera en, en los cursos. Entonces, y ahí es como he ido más o menos dominando esa parte de los, de los manuales, pero yo así, pero nunca tenía la oportunidad así de, sí, de hacer el speaking. Has, has adquirido bastante vocabulario y y captas las ideas y todo eso, pero fluency, eso es lo único, uh -huh. pero si la tenés, solo que quizás te falta como conectar ciertas ideas, entonces no sé si te acuerdas que yo le presenté un cuadro de varios, de vocabulario, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Hay un cuadro en específico donde ustedes pueden detallar, ¿verdad? O conectar ideas secuenciales o contrarias, eso a vos te va a servir bastante, porque como trabajas eh, dando tus aportes, o tus puntos de vista o principalmente de cómo se puede trabajar sobre ciertos aspectos en el área laboral eso es lo único uh -huh. no o sea, madurar más la, la, la frase eh, y que todo agarrar, que, agarrar que, envión eso, agarrar. Eso. y, que, y porque, que tenga coherencia que tenga coherencia uh -huh. si sí tiene coherencia lo que vos decís pero ya hablar ya 3, 5 minutos 10 minutos de algo ya 
ya es un poco diferente, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. No es como las, las eh, actividades que hacemos, que son 30 segundos, que la gente habla 15 de más tranquilo, porque estamos en beginner, ¿verdad? Estamos en básico. Uh -huh. Pero sí, lo ideal es que lleve ya, digamos, esa, esa secuencia así. Así que no, yo siento que está bastante bien. Solo que la continuidad, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Trabajar ahí... más en la continuidad y en la... Sí, en, la, en la confianza. Sí, hombre, pero... Porque todavía, yo siento que todavía tengo un poco de, de, de temor a equivocarme y es donde uno se queda. Ah, 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 ah. Pero que no te importe porque al final, sí, de hecho, la gente que la, lo, lo, los, los nativos, bueno, los, los que hablan inglés o los que manejan diferentes idiomas, cuando te equivocas no te dicen nada normalmente no te dicen, no, se equivoca, sino que solo, mm, I'm sorry, uh, can you say repeat? again? Repeat again, please. O, oh, I don't get your idea. Como que no te caso, pero no te hacen como sentir como que te estás diciendo, ¿verdad? Normalmente, mm -hmm. normalmente. No como uno que, ¿eh? Sí, cabal, a veces algunos que, que, que están aprendiendo y ven raro. Así que, no, hombre, Fabrizio, que veo que sos autodidacta y, y eso, que vas a aprender mucho más todavía. Bastante. Ok, thank you. Ahí le digo te... a mi doña que, que se ponga las pilas también para que me, me ayude a practicar. Sí, hombre. Pues sí, ¿Cuál, es ¿Cuál es la canción? ¿Cuál es la canción que te pones a cantar? ¿Cuál es la canción que te pones a cantar? Varias, pero no me acuerdo. <ríe> Oye, no se acuerda, dice. But, así pasa, así pasa en las exposiciones. No, hombre, dale con todo, estoy practicando y, y ánimo, dice, espero que te esté sirviendo parte del vocabulario que le doy, pero ah, obviamente... Que sí, es que ah, puede piano men. ah, que si se puede piano men, dice. Ah, de Billy Joel. Uh -huh. De Billy Joel. Uh -huh. Y buenísimo, buenísimo. Dice que es difícil, yo solo le he oído, pero eh, son algunas que otra canción que sí me animo a... A ir cantando, por, por ejemplo, la, la que nunca falta en el vehículo es Summer Night City de Ethereum. Ah, no, es buenísimo. Fíjate que normalmente los, 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 las canciones de metal tienen vocabulario más rebuscado, especialmente las de Power Metal, ¿verdad? Porque como son, medio, son un tanto medievales o, o mm. son varios, así que te tratan de, de. Ah, de, por ejemplo, hay una. Eh, Sí, incluso traté de seguir algunas letras de, de Maiden, por ejemplo, The Rain of the Ancient Mariner. Sí, sí, la y la, en la primera frase me quedo ahí. Yo fui a... Sí, sí, son bien elevadas, pero sí, vamos uh -huh. a aprender bastante, bastante. Así que bueno, vamos despidiendo, Fabricio, así que espero que te sigas así pues, constantemente. Y estamos pendientes, ¿verdad? Ok, teacher, okay. nos vemos mañana entonces. Gracias, bueno. Ok, sí, Excelente. You. Ahí se me congeló esta cosa.